welcome to my channel. So it's the end of September. Actually, I'm cheating a little bit. It's October 1st, but it is time for my end of September favorites and not so favorites. And this month I'm trying something a little new, which is I'm going to be splitting this up into two videos. So one is going to be about products and one is going to be about Technic cues because I don't know about you, but I find that as the weather changes, the humidity changes, my skin changes, my hormones are on the fritz, you know, the things that happen, that the techniques that work one month might totally leave me high and dry the next. And so I've been doing a couple things differently this month that have really helped me out. And I think most of them are not things that I've actually discovered, but they're things that I finally kind of, you know, picked up the clue phone and realized that they could help me. So I'm going to pass them along to you. So uh, without further ado, this is the text techniques portion. Blah, blah, blah. This is the techniques portion of the video. So we are going to start out with my bare naked face and I must apologize in advance. We're going to get this out of the way so that you can be exposed to it as little as possible. I recommend that all the women and children leave the room. Well, maybe not the women, but the kids, they don't need to be seeing this naked face, but I want you to see how I have been applying my serums and primers and all the liquid type stuff that goes on before my makeup because it's really helped my skin out. Out. So take a good stiff drink of whatever you have and buckle in because here comes my naked face. Okay, here it is, my naked face. And I am going to be applying my Lancome Genifique Serum. It's my favorite, my ride or die. I love it so much. And I'm just going to be putting one little dropperino into my hand. And this is going to get rubbed all over my face just to distribute it. And now I am pressing the product into my skin using the flats of my hands. And I am really pressing. Right there, I was trying to get the sound to pick up in the microphone, but it didn't work. Hence the voiceover. Because if you do this correctly, you will hear this funky kind of crackling sound. And that is actually the serum being pressed into your pores and the air that was in your pores kind of being displaced. So it's almost like a bubble wrap kind of thing. It's kind of addictive. And this also ensures that the product will absorb quickly. Now this is the eye Genifique. It's called Light Pearl and I'm gonna do a similar thing here. It comes with this metal knobby knob thing which helps press it into the skin but I'm going to uh, wind up using my fingers as well. Just making sure I got all that goodness all over my orbital bone and there it goes i'm just pressing it in now using very light pressure because the skin here is super duper delicate and i don't want to lose an eye but this helps use less product and it helps it absorb more quickly because think about it you're using an expensive serum if you don't press it into your skin what's going to happen what's going to happen is that a lot of it is going to evaporate straight off your face before it gets inside your skin where it can work its brand of expensive magic. So that's why I do this this way and it has helped my skin so, so much. Next, I'm going to apply moisturizer. This is the Tatcha Pore Balancing Water Gel Moisturizer. It's the one with the gold in it. And I'm going to give myself two pumps because this doesn't have the slip in it that the Lancome does. So I have to do a little more rubbing, but then here comes the pressing. And as I'm doing that, my skin skin is being intensely, intensely hydrated, and within about one minute, I'll be ready to put the rest of my makeup on. I think that's just enough about my bare naked face. So let's return to reality now. Did y'all survive my naked face? I hope so, but I need a drink now. Apple cider with ginger and nutmeg in it. And cocaine! I'm kidding. There's no nutmeg in it. Okay, moving right along, let's uh, talk about setting spray. I'm going to kind of bounce around a bit with my techniques. I was going to do this in the order that I like do them every day, but I realized that I would have to be constantly looking at my notes and that's not fun. So anyway, let's talk about setting spray. Two things about it. Number one, Urban Decay All Nighter, right? We all know this is the holy grail of setting sprays. You absolutely can't go wrong with it. The problem is it's expensive. This is the travel size. It's $14 if you want the full Dealy Whacker. It's 30, which is a lot of money for most people, myself included, for a bottle of setting spray. So here's what you do, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, is when you run out of your Urban Decay All Nighter, you fill it with the Maybelline version. It's called Master Fix, I think. You just put it in here and check out the spray on this thing. Do you see how even that is? There's no drops, chunks, rivulets that are gonna like claw their way down your face and ruin your makeup. 
no, 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 no. So don't throw away your all-nighter bottle. Keep it around until you can get some more all-nighter, but then I'm still hanging on to this bottle because the sprayer rocks and it can turn an okay setting spray into a really good one just because you're applying it more effectively. Super, super, super cool. The other thing I wanna talk about with regard to setting spray, which has seriously saved my life, especially in the early part of September when it was hot and humid and disgusting, is this. When you apply setting spray, you probably do what 99.999% of us all do, myself included until recently, which was you put on your whole face of makeup, spackle, 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 powder, 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 and then you take a bath in setting spray, which works, especially if you're using a really good one, but it's not actually the best or most effective way to do it. Here's how I have been doing it and I am just kicking myself that I didn't do this before, okay? So I do all my serum, sunscreen, moisturizer, SPF, primer, color corrector, the other litany of products I use, right? The foundation, color corrector, concealer, um, what else? Powder, right? Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder under the eyes, my L'Oreal Hydra Perfect on the rest of my face, and I don't bake it. I just apply it. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then after I apply my powder, take a bath in this. But really, it's more of a shower than a bath because you're just going to go like in an X shape and then in a cross shape with the bottle held about 12 inches away from my face. I know some people hold it closer, but I like that super duper fine mist, especially because I'm going to be doing this again in a minute. So after that dries, I give it 10, 15 seconds to dry. Then I do brows, bronzer, highlight, contour, blush. Then I do this again. And I might only use three sprays maybe this time, but I do it again. Give me another 10 or 15 seconds, let it evaporate. And then I'll do my remaining makeup. And then I will set it with some more sprays of this. And my makeup is bulletproof when I do this. Bulletproof. I have no idea why, but it works. I have had my makeup on for over 10 hours today. Look at me. I'm not shiny. Don't mistake my highlight for shine because it's like intentional. My brows are still on. This one's a little janky, but whatever. Don't act like you never had a janky brow, right? My my lipstick I did reapply, okay, but it's a lipstick, so again, give me a break on that. But for whatever reason, this really works. So if me, with my super oily skin, Sarlacc pit pores, and the fact that it's been super humid here for most of September, if that technique makes my face bulletproof, hallelujah. So if you have similar skin to mine, try it out. I think you will love it. Okay, now I kind of talked about that a little bit out of order because now we need to talk about how to apply powder. Now, I did not come up with this technique at all. I'm not claiming to have come up with it, but I've really become addicted to it because it works so well, and that is this. After you apply, and by the way, I'm assuming you're using a beauty blender. If you're not using a beauty blender, start. <laughs> I, I can't emphasize that enough. I know this isn't the product video. I'll be talking about it again, but Beauty Blender is an absolute must. I do not feel that there are any dupes on the market, not even the Real Techniques one, although it is closer than anything else. So after you bounce your foundation on, your concealer, whatever, you gotta make sure that your Beauty Blender is damp, and by damp, I mean really damp. Then I go in with my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder, and I load the Beauty Blender up with a moderate amount of it, and I press it under my eyes. And I mean press, like with some pressure, not to the point of it hurting, of course, but I'm really pressing the product into the skin. Now, this is a little bit different than the baking technique, which is where, you know, you dust a whole like metric butt ton of powder where you want to set and highlight and then you wait like 15 minutes and then you dust it off. That does work for a lot of people. I find for me though it doesn't because it makes my skin here look crepey for some reason. I don't have any idea why. It's just my skin can be kind of not nice to me sometimes. So I find that using the very damp Beauty Blender kind of, it melts your powder and your concealer and your foundation and your primer together with your skin almost. That sounds gross, but you know what I mean, right? So that it really stays on all day, it doesn't crease, it doesn't move, and it looks like your own skin. Examine my under eye area right here, okay? 
And you saw my naked face earlier in the video, so you know that I have these like crazy circles. Damp Beauty Blender and just use a lot of your loose powder and go to town. And it, this also saves you money, by the way, because with baking, you know, you're going to be throwing a lot away a lot of excess powder. Whereas this lets you use less, but you get more benefit. Now, after doing that, it's time to powder the rest of my face. And I have been using my L'Oreal Hydra Perfect. Again, look to the product video for more on that. But I've been applying it with a puff and then I blend it in with this. Now, when you are using a brush, to apply powder over your face and you're using you know your circular motions or your windshield wipers whatever it is that you do you might find that it makes your skin look kind of rough because we all have these really teeny beeny little hairs that grow out of our skin even on your face and you'll find that like that peach fuzz if you're doing this with your brush it can kick it up and also, if you have dry patches, if you have any flakiness at all, it can kind of kick up those like dry little skin flakes, which is totally disgusting. I'm so sorry, but it happens. So how do you combat that without just beating your face with powder and not blending it out? Here's how you do it. You stipple. It's that beauty blender principle I keep talking about. So after I applied my Hydra Perfect or, you know, whatever powder du jour I'm into, I, I start doing this and I'm stippling the product in. And this brush is super soft, so it doesn't make my skin red. It, d it doesn't irritate me at all, but it really ensures that the powder is being pressed into my skin so it stays there instead of flying off when a fairy farts. Check it out. Just make sure you have a nice, good, fluffy brush to do that with. Okay, we are surging toward the end. A couple more things. So contouring. Contouring for pale individuals can be a scary proposition because you can look like you took a brown Sharpie and tried to draw on a new face. You know, somebody who has a darker skin tone might not have as much of a problem. But for me, contouring is scary, but it's also necessary. So how do we get around this? Check it out. This is the Rimmel Stay Matte Press Powder in shade Creamy Beige, shade 18. Now I thought this was the darkest shade they make. It's not. They have a couple other ones, but my drugstore doesn't have to carry them for whatever reason. So I picked this up. Now this is a dusty, cool toned beige with like rose undertones to it which makes it a wonderful, subtle, cool toned highlight, which I use a lot to contour my nose. Now I actually, today I didn't really contour it very much at all. Um, if I wanna make it super snatched, I would use more product. But this is fabulous and it's cheap. It's drugstore, it's like five bucks, so check it out. Now the other contouring dealy whacker that I've been experimenting with this month and loving is actually contouring with this. This is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette. Amazing palette. And this middle shade right here is called Lazarus and it is a grayish taupe. Perfect contour color for fair skin. Now why? You would think, I don't want to look like I'm dead. Isn't that going to make me look like I'm gray? No, it's not. And here's why. Because think about shadows. Just go pause me, look around, look at some shadows. What color are those shadows? Those shadows are a shade of gray, right? So if when you're contouring, the idea is to accentuate shadows that maybe already exist below your cheekbones, for example, or even to reshape and add some shadows where you don't have any naturally, the best way to do that is to use a shade that mimics what a shadow actually looks like because otherwise you look like you have bronzer here. Definitely not an attractive look in my opinion. So that's why I take my trusty uh, Real Techniques contouring brush. I actually think they call this the highlighting brush. No, I'm wrong. They call it the contour brush. And I will just go along here like so with that Lazarus shade. Now. If it's at nighttime or if I have a little color on my skin for whatever reason, like if it's, you know, like the armpit of summer, I might follow that up with a hint of one of the contouring shades from the Kat Von D. I usually use the cool one and just will go literally right here, like where my face and my ear meet. And then I will buff it out into oblivion so that it doesn't look like I have a contouring product on. 
fancy that. So if you are super pale, like yours truly, and it doesn't matter if you have warm undertones, cool undertones, or neutral undertones, consider a gray-based contour. I think you will love it. Is that everything I have to talk about? Let's consult the list. Is it everything I have to talk about? I believe it is. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for sticking in there with me. Um, look for round two coming up real soon. Round two is going to be the products video. And in the meantime, thank you so much for the wonderful comments that I've gotten. That's so nice of you. And I really appreciate everybody who's taken the time just to drop a quick note. Please subscribe if you haven't already and you would like to uh, join the crazy train. You can click down here or up in the link above my head. And in the meantime, I'm going to get started on my product video. So I will see you guys real soon. Have a great day. Bye.